Hi guys and welcome back to Pass and Move and for today's episode in our Tactics and Team Guides series we've got Manchester United for you here uh, with probably one of the best squads in the league actually in comparison to the uh, previous episode we did. Uh, so if we just have a look at the squad as you can see I haven't done anything just yet um, and just have by having a quick glance at this team you can tell actually there's a couple of players missing and uh, Let's see who we can find here. Schweinsteiger and Young. Let's move him back to the senior team. And that's pretty much it. Alright, so just by looking at this team, you can already tell what type of formation we're going with. But there's a couple of formations that you can actually go with in truth. Uh, but first, let's as always sort out by ability. Find your best 11 players and try and make a team out of them. So that should be just about here. Apparently Rooney's not in the top 11. Uh, and let's see, we've got a goalkeeper, centre mid, attacking midfielder, wingers. Uh, got defensive midfielder as well, some centre back midfielder again, left back and another midfielder. So by the looks of it, there's two choices. Uh, you can either go with the... 442 is definitely the wrong one. Assistant manager recommends 433, which I think you could do. And you can also do the typical 4-2-3-1, not DM wide, sorry, just a normal wide one. And of course, both formations are possession based, so control for both. And we'll get into instructions in just a second. Actually, we can do that right now. Uh, as you guys know, uh, when it comes to, or you should know by now because of how many times I've done this, but. Uh, in terms of possession based size, I like to keep my tactics simple, even with direct. So what I normally do is lower tempo, shorter passing, be more expressive and run from positions so what I like, just a four. Um, but if you're not a fan, what you could do is obviously do the other bits that you need for possession based. So um, you need to close down more to get possession back, you need to work the ball into the box, you can play out defence, uh, you can retain possession. Get stuck in as well if you want, if you're not afraid of getting yellow cards and you know maybe even a few reds. And if you play narrow, that moves the players a little bit closer to each other, makes it easier to keep possession. Now, as you can see, too many instructions for my liking. So, like I said, keep it simple is my uh, motto, I guess you could say. Just really uh, what I prefer. So, just this four is what I do, and uh, the same should be for the four-two-three-one actually as well. So, there you go. We'll get into. We'll try and figure out a formation now as well where we can play direct type of football. And actually, um, my guess is the 4141. I think that's probably best for um, this type of team. Now, the problem with the 4141, let me find it first. All right, now the problem with the 4141 is you don't really have proper all and out wingers. Now you can play Mkhitaryan there, he's already trained, so that's great. He can play as a winger. Of course, it's not his uh, best role, and we get into that in just a second. Um, but Marshall, he's used to it, but he doesn't have uh, the crossing. And of course, because he's right footed, it means he will cut in more often. He won't play as a traditional winger, if that's what you're looking for. So uh, it does definitely still do the job. And of course, with a team like Manchester United, you won't really be playing on the counter too much so we'll stay on attacking and uh, like I mentioned before when it's direct you want to play a higher tempo more direct and as I mentioned I like the run from positions to be more expressive but if you do want to include more um, more uh, instructions I guess first of all what you want to do is get run, run from positions off and be more expressive those are just really um, not essential to either possession based or uh, direct style of play it's just more about personal preferences so if you're going to go direct you can clear the ball to flanks uh, you can run at defense you can pass into space you can even hit into early er, you can hit early crosses as well um, and uh, some people would suggest playing a little bit deeper and closing down a little less I think this is a bit too much but closing down a little less can um, let's see yeah that still does it too much Anyways, closing down a little less or playing a little deeper can draw the opposition in and that gives you space to pass into and run into, of course, as well, clearing the ball into the flanks and whatnot. You can even stay on your feet if you want to try and keep your shape as much as possible. Uh, the 
higher tempo and more direct passing already gives your team a lot of width but if you want even uh, you know play even wider uh, which will help of course being more direct and whatnot then you can also go completely wide um, but as I mentioned same as before I like keeping it simple so run from positions and be more expressive are always there the only things that change is my tempo and the passing directness now in the 4141 the thing I love about this formation is that you can actually play possession based and um, direct play uh, using this formation it suits both actually um, but we're gonna try and you know make use of it with a 4141 here it's also it's actually quite useful in the sense with this team because you've already got the 433 here uh, which is possession basis you know not too far off um, but in terms of the roles we can have a look here and this will of course depend on the formation and depend on which well, of course, which formation you use, but also which your, what are your preferences uh, as well. So if we just have, actually have a look at the squad. So this is our complete senior squad and we've got 25 players. Now, in my opinion, far too many. You need 11 players who are your best team. And because United are a top, well, supposed to be a top team, then you need to have them all on leading ability, a uh, leading Premier Division ability uh, or higher, of course. Uh, Pogba's your world-class talent, I think. He is world-class and De Gea as well. So, you know, these are... These are incredible players to have in your team. Apparently he's just star player, but I think he's a bit more. Um, but yeah, so 11 first team players who are leading or more in terms of ability. And the rest can be... Um, well, you've got a couple of you know good players uh, in terms of their ability. But you should probably have your backups with uh, to have potential, basically, uh, in becoming leading players. So Shaw, for example, the perfect backup player. The only issue is he's kind of already ready for first team football. As you can see, he's better rated than Blind in the left back position. Um, so it's not too much of an issue, of course. It's a good issue. And, uh, you know, he's fairly susceptible to injuries. So I'm guessing you can't rely on him too often. Uh, but he'll definitely be an incredible player once he fulfills his potential there. Superb rating for first team. And uh, so let's just get into it. So, first of all, you've got your two goalkeepers, De Gea and Romero. Of course, De Gea is excellent first choice backup Romero you can always sell and bring in a youngster with potential because I don't think you really have any in the youth ranks uh, in terms of goalkeeping and um, of course you can still keep him a good player ability can always you know he's a decent they're always decent backups but you just can't rely on them too often now where you do need to improve without that is probably your right back position uh, both Valencia and who's obviously typically a winger but can play as a fullback. Uh, I wouldn't be too happy about his marking, but his position is decent enough and he can do a job. Uh, but at 30 years of age, you might be tempted to sell him. And the reason why I say right back is the place to improve in is because you've got uh, Valencia only in good ability and Darmian also in just good ability. So you do need to bring in probably a better right back and sell either or, depending on your preference. And then left back, you're pretty much sorted with Blind and Luke Shaw, but as I mentioned, Blind is Oh, he's rated as leading here. Uh, sometimes he's rated as good, but if he's rated as leading, your left back position is sorted then, and you can eventually maybe move him to a pr to a place that you maybe prefer him playing in a bit more. I would say he's not really top left back or top set, top a uh, top centre back either, just because he's lacking in some areas such as jumping, reach, heading, and then in the wing back places, you know, like crossing and things like that. So. I would eventually start to try and move into centre mid or defensive mid, really defend, depending on your preferences. Um, and centre back positions, you're kind of doing okay. You've got Bailly who's going to improve, he's only good but he should improve into leading. Uh, Smalling is occasionally rated as leading, he is rated as leading here, so that might change later on, but at least for this season I guess you can keep him on, use your money elsewhere. Uh, Jones should maybe improve a little bit so he could be a decent backup until you decide whether he's you know good enough or not of course he has problems with injuries so you might get sick of him getting injured all the time and sell him as well uh rojo though is probably the one to sell you can definitely sell him and bring someone in with potential of course he is on crazy high wages for his ability he's only a rotational player here and he's making 110k per week so you can easily sell him for 12 million and uh, invest that money elsewhere uh, in centre mid, you've got a couple of bits of uh, competitiveness, I guess you could say. You've got six players here, which would be perfect if you're playing the 4-3-3 or the 4-1-4-1. But if you are playing the 4-2-3-1, you don't need this, ma this many. You only need four of them. And I would suggest keeping Pogba, Herrera and Schneiderlin. Uh, Fellaini and Carrick you can probably get rid of. 
they are both just good. Uh, Schweinsteiger is leading, I think, sometimes he is, sometimes leading, sometimes just good. Um, but yeah, you can probably get rid of all three and bring in someone with potential again. Uh, but of course you can keep pick and choose which one you'd rather keep and it also it depends on your instructions Who you'd rather keep and who you're playing where with what role um, Now the issue here is you've got one right winger in Mkhitaryan, uh, but Lingard is capable of playing as right mid right wing So that might be something you want to look into Memphis Depay is an inside forward But I'm I've been tempted before to play him as a winger just because it takes out his decision-making and of course his vision and whatnot. He does have decent uh, finishing though, so he should still be a threat from out wide. Uh, and I would be tempted to play him in the right wing, maybe as a backup to Mkhitaryan or Lingard. It really depends on you. Uh, Rashford, inside forward, or you can play him as a striker. It depends on where you see his future. Now that's, this is where you need to make a decision. Uh, Rashford and Marshall are both left wingers in the game, but they are capable of playing in the striker role. Uh, and it depends on where you see, again, where you see their future. So you might want to start them off in the left wing because it is a bit of a place where uh, you know, they can actually flourish a little bit because the striker position is kind of taken up by Ibrahimovic. Uh, Rooney can be a decent backup as an advanced playmaker or a striker, preferably more as a striker. And uh, Mata is your best advanced playmaker. Now, of course, if you're playing the 4 2 3 1, Mata should be starting an advanced playmaker. You've got Mkhitaryan on the right wing, and I would say either Marshall or Rashford on your inside forward. Um, but yeah, if this is a 4-3-3, all this pretty much changes. So it's up to you. Those are the players that you can keep or sell. But if we are going to go with instructions, or if you're playing the 4-3-3, you should probably go with uh, maybe um, a defensive midfielder here. You can play Pogba. I think this is the formation that would bring Pog you know, the best out of Pogba, I think. If you play him as an advanced playmaker on, on attack, sorry, uh, I think that suits him best even though he can play as a deep line playmaker, so it's up to you. He does have a decent amount of pace, his acceleration is okay, he's got great dribbling first touch, of course his finishing is great, and he does get into the opposition area anyways, so you might be tempted to play him as an advanced playmaker instead. But he is, uh, because of how good he is as a player, you can play him in a number of different roles and he'll, he'll flourish anyway. Deep line playmaker, advanced playmaker, roaming playmaker, I've tried him there as well, he's quite good, uh, and a box-to-box -box midfielder of course as well. You can play him almost any role, and he'll be good in it. But the best one, I would say, if you're playing the 4-3-3, is to play him in an advanced playmaker role. Now, of course, that would mean the wingers are inside forwards, and your striker should be complete forward on support if it is Ibrahimovic. And eventually he'll start to age and lose his pace. I would be tempted to slowly turn him into a false nine where he doesn't have to rely on his pace. If we can quickly find him here. Yeah, so false nine doesn't rely on any pace and he's got plenty of agility balance and uh, you know vision passing and whatnot so you can eventually move into complete forward but it's up to you false nine just suits the possession based football a little bit more over here you can either play a deep line playmaker on support um you know with Carrick, schweinsteiger herrera possibly as well or you can play a box to box midfielder i think herrera can play that as well uh, but i would be tempted in terms of possession base to play a ball winning midfielder on support he'll be great running around stealing the ball off everyone and that'd be perfect. Of course, both fullback positions should be, be should be playing as wing backs, and they should mirror the other players above. So let's say you should be doing that: wing, wing back on support, inside forward on attack, inside forward on support, wing back on attack. And this is how your team should pretty much look like if you're playing the four-three-three. If you're playing the four-two-three-one, you've got the complete forward still on support. Eventually moving into the false line if you want. Advanced playmaker on attack, you can be playing Mata over there. And uh, you've got inside forwards probably on both wings. Let's just quickly do this. And again, like I mentioned in all the other uh, tactical guides, when you're playing the 4-2-3-1, the centre mid duo here need to be a bit more defensive. So centre mid on defend, and Pogba on the deep line playmaker on support. He, is, he has a preference for playing on the left part of the centre mid, so you should be playing him here. Uh, deep line playmaker on support, and that would be perfect for him basically. And you can pretty much free him up and Schweinsteiger, Fellaini, and I think Herrera can do a job here, but he's probably best as um, Pogba's backup Schneider in perfect first role for Laney and Schweinsteiger. It's up to you who to keep and who to sell. Um, in the 4-1-4-1 though, you want to be playing a different type of role I guess. Complete forward on support for sure, do not play a false nine, that does not help with playing direct football at all. You should be playing wingers of course, and full backs. No wing backs of course. 
and see we go on attack. All right, now the midfield, the makeup of the midfield is pretty much up to you. Uh, for direct play, a box-to-box -box midfielder would be perfect. Uh, you can play deep line playmaker in defense as a you know a defensive midfielder there, or you. Yeah, actually, I think you should be playing a deep line playmaker in the anchoring here. Uh, your your attacking midfielder because you know you should have a defensive midfielder supporting one and attacking one. So you're attacking one, you've got a couple of options. Uh, I don't think advanced playmaker actually you don't have a couple of options. That's me mistaken. Uh, I don't think you should be playing advanced playmaker on attack at all. That slows down everything. You want to be bypassing your midfield. So I think your best bet is probably centre midfielder on attack. Pogba's still capable of playing that role. We can have a quick look at him. Uh, might not be his best role, but he can certainly do a job. As you can see here, it's off the ball, passing, first touch is great. He even got plenty of finishing and long shots. Acceleration and pace helps. Stamina, work rate, perfect. Uh, I think the only thing that I would worry about is his decision, make, decision making, but I think that would eventually improve as he improves. Of course, he's still a player with potential at 23 years of age when you start this um, save. So I think that's pretty much what you should go with when you're playing on the direct play. And I think that's pretty much it in terms of the tactical guide and team guide. Now, the players that you need to look out for uh, on developing, your under-23 and your under-18 squad, there's uh, a couple of really good players to look out for. Tahith Chong, definitely a player to look out for. Great that he's already a winger, that's perfect for you. I think you can also switch him around to playing as an inside forward if you want. Just train him from when he's young so he eventually grows into the role. Uh, but I would say you'd have to worry a bit about his finishing and uh, I think just his finishing, his decision making is okay. I mean, all of these will definitely improve. You can of course play him as an advanced playmaker as well. He's capable of that, passing vision. Those should all improve as well. So it's really up to you how you train him. Just sort it out from the beginning and make a decision. Uh, Angel Gomez is another player where you can play in a number of roles. Um, or rather a number of positions. I think roles is limited. I think he's pretty much just an advanced playmaker. Don't try and turn him into a winger at all. He's got horrible crossing. Uh, inside four is not too good either, he doesn't have too great finishing or off the ball movement. I think advanced playmaker is your best bet and uh, you can decide whether you want to play him as advanced playmaker on the attacking midfielder position or the left wing position, either way or. Uh, Axel Tuanzebe is really close to being ready for the first team. Skybet Championship alone or two should do it. Um, but yeah, really good centre midfielder to look out for. Maybe you can keep Rojo on for one more season while he gets his experience, Tuanzebe, and then play him as your star centre-back. Uh, Timothy Fosso Mensa, definitely the perfect replacement for playing as a ball-winning midfielder. Perfect for a role. He's really close. Skybet Championship again, you can just send him out on loan for one season and then bring him back. Roshan Williams and Tuanzebe should basically be your future centre-back pairings. Uh, Cameron Borthwick-Jackson, you might want to... I don't think you can actually bring him back on loan, so possibly next season instead. Um, but it would also be an option to explore. James Wilson can improve, but the, the, uh, the dilemma you have here, rather, is that he's a poacher. He's not ready for any type of support role, which really hurts a one striker formation that we've been playing with. So you have a decision to make. You can keep sending him out on loan, see if he actually develops. If he doesn't develop, then he's made your decision for you. But if he does develop, then you've got a bit of a dilemma and you'd have to change your tactical plans. He's not ready for a false line, deep line forward, none of those roles. He's just a pure out poacher. He'd be excellent to be honest because he does have crazy finishing acceleration and pace. But it's all a matter about him developing. I think those are the youngsters to look out for. You do have a couple of options who can eventually maybe exceed their uh, expectations. Um, but it's all about development. So I think that will be all for today's episode. If you did enjoy it, then please do, of course, hit the like button and subscribe for more Daily Football Manager 2017 content. And as always, thank you guys for watching.